Uh, have we gotten any word from them about when they would go back to do curbing if they plan to at all, or do they wait until the next paving project to do that? Well, interesting enough, both the county and the state uh, assume responsibilities to pave the roads, but they take no responsibility for the curbing. Uh, they do at the corners where they have to replace the curbs for the handicap ramps, but the, uh, the straight sections, they don't they assume no responsibility for it. Okay. So, that's something so I doubt actually... whether they'll come back and do it. Okay. So that would be something that would be under our jurisdiction. We should possibly think about that going forward with DOT projects that we, we do. Um, I don't know. I'd pursue it more with the, the county first. Okay. So it is possible to get them to do it. Well, potentially. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. It gives me something. To but I mean, they don't do it as part of the project, is what I mean by it. There's some responsibility. And then they usually be asking that they, you know, homeowner's responsibility. Mm. Uh, you know, I, if we were looking for them to do something, I would, would suggest we pursue it with uh, the letter or something. Okay. From the entire council? Well, perhaps, maybe or? a letter from the mayor's office or whatever. Okay. Um, I would support that. Yeah. How would you recommend to go to the county, county engineer? County road? If yeah. you want, I can put something together. And, that uh, would be yeah. really greatly appreciated because I know when they did North Avenue, the state road, they replaced the curving wall there. So I'm surprised that they didn't do that to go around. Mayor, for what it's worth, Don is 100% correct, agreed, and that's what we've seen too elsewhere. And the only thing I'll add, sorry, there is if we, I'm afraid that if we start to do it, yeah. we'll be responsible forever. So I'll second well, what Don said. Right. Let's, well, let's try to get I would 100% like the idea of them doing that. Right. Absolutely. And not us, but right. at first it came off like it was our responsibility. Well, so yeah. I'm glad sure. if we can put the onus on them, let's do that. Just have to have patience, and they're not going to jump to do it. Right. Per, more perseverance. Perseverance. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. Um, Mr. Renaud, do you have anything for us this evening? Uh, I do, Mayor. Uh, several things. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> first of all, well, I guess we have the uh, public hearing tonight on the uh, revised rate schedule for the industrial uh, sewer use of charge. I don't think there's anything we need to go over on that. We can discuss that at the last meeting. Uh, on the workshop agenda, and I, th I think attached to yours, or at least included with it, are two ordinances that I prepared. Uh, one of them at the request of laws and licenses, and one of them at the request of the health officer. The uh, health officer one was uh, the one that pertains to massage establishments, and that's fairly straightforward. Um, that when the health officer reported that the state now licenses massage therapists and recommended that we delete the provisions in our ordinance that pertain to uh, background checks because in order to be licensed now, uh, the state requires a background check so that we uh, don't need to have one. And in fact, it conflicts with state law. So that's basically what the change is um, in that ordinance. There's nothing, there's nothing in here that's new. There's just a couple of things that came out. And um, on the Dumpsters, that was, um, it's a, it was a proposal to regulate dumpsters uh, and containers. Um, generally, just to give you sort of an outline, the general framework of it, um, as was some of, most of which, um, some parts of which were given to me, um, but it, it requires that if if a dumpster can fit on somebody's property, that they have to put the dumpster on their own property. If it doesn't fit on the property, it can go on the street as long as it fits on the street. If it doesn't fit on the street, then you can't have a dumpster at all. Uh, it has a length of time that you can keep it, which is 30 days on your own property, 15 days on the street. You have to get a permit from the police. Uh, and the dumpster has to have markers and warning devices and be identified as to the company that owns the dumpsters. Uh, it's got a, a uh, 
provision for when it has to be dumped, particularly if it has um, uh, any kind of waste that would generate uh, odors. It has fees for uh, uh, which are di differentiated for whether it's on your own property or on the street. If it goes on the street, a, uh, a bond or a, I should say a posting of a, an escrow is required. And uh, the uh, company that provides the dumpster has to provide the borough with proof of insurance. I think that's the main provisions. Mayor, can I ask Bob a couple quick questions on that? Absolutely. Bob, I just obviously got it tonight, so I just really just have three three quick questions. Bill, can I just yeah, jump in here? Can I ask questions on dumpsters? Yeah. That's wait? still in draft. Yeah, that, okay, that didn't actually come back um, to the license yet. Okay. And uh, really, it didn't need to go to all council yet. So if you could just hold off on that. Thank, Thank you. you.
Today, the 7 out of 10 current New Jersey residents living within five miles of a train station, the challenge, the challenge is to accommodate both cars, <clears throat> both our existing and new residents with housing, employment, and mo mobility choices, so the state's economy re remains robust. It makes sense to focus this anticipated growth and the existing transportation infrastructure in communities that are embracing transit-oriented development. Housing near the transit not only holds its value, it can even command a premium. In fact, according to Columbia University study between 1993 and 2003, residential properties within one half mile of stations served by Midtown Direct Trains, one seat ride service to Midtown Manhattan along the Morris, Essex, and Boonton and Montclair rail lines increased in value by 113%, while properties further away from these stations experienced only an 80% increase. Um, so, in another section of our own master plan, section nine, it says, adjacent and convenient to the areas shown in the land use plan as a transit-oriented development, efforts should continue to add and supply public parking. There's other areas of our own master plan that speaks to redevelopment and adding parking and in increasing, um, you know, encouraging being a, a commuter transit village. So if that is what we want, we're, we're, we're saying that we want to encourage commuter, commuters to our town, being a transit village. We need to solve the parking issue in this town for, for everything that we've created. So. If we have a plan, laws and license we're talking, and I have a report that's going to come in the later part of the meeting, that I believe that we need to, to move in the direction in the future to find parking, and, and we'll discuss this in future meetings, and this is a, a topic that we are going to have to continue to have amongst this council. We, we need to um, follow our own master plan. It, it, it was in here in 2009, and I think we need to just move forward with that. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. I just want to say, if that's okay, uh, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Council President Palmer. <coughs> also, I went to the last planning board meeting, a very enlightening experience always going to planning board meetings. It's not my first one. And I would have to say that it's a lengthy um, meeting, which is fine, but about 75% of the conversation had to do with parking in one way or another. It's definitely a major issue in the town, something that should not go ignored, and I'm happy that we have it on the radar, and we have, we're working towards having that vision and following through on that vision for really the future of Garland, so uh, thank you for taking that out and sharing that with us. I want to read this new paper? <laughs> oh, I will. <laughs> and I put that with the uh, Councilman Martin, anything you want to take for discussion? Uh, uh, nothing there. Okay. Councilman Nash, you want anything for discussion this evening? Uh, nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Nash, Just three quick things. Uh, I know everyone knows today's Earth Day, so I hope you did something in observance of it. Uh, Friday is Arbor Day. Uh, the school is going to be planting a tree that we received through uh, Union County. If anybody's interested in attending their um, ceremony, uh, as of yesterday, they didn't know what time it would be. You can certainly contact them to find out. Um, and last, Mayor, at the last council meeting, a um, gentleman came here from the uh, New Jersey Highlands and asked us to uh, support a resolution with uh, fellow council members' uh, concurrence. I, I'd like to ask that you put that on for adoption at the next council meeting. If anyone has any questions on it, I don't to answer all of them, but hopefully I'll try to answer the questions that you may have. And then we'll get the opportunity to review that. <laughs> what, what's the what's the resolution version? The bottom line is that we receive about 25 percent of our water, our drinking water, uh, from the Highlands area. I'm sure most people know the Highlands supplies the vast majority of drinking water for the residents of the state of Jersey, and that's why uh, a few years back the, the state did adopt a, uh, a regional, they created a regional planning entity uh, to review. Uh, development in the Highlands region, which is basically parts of the same Warren, Bergen counties. I think it goes down to Hunt and a little bit too. With the with the objective of preserving those lands where the water is
collected and stored in uh, reservoirs. Um, and they have to undergo, just as we do, a master plan re-examination every so many years. And so the, the thrust of the, I don't think I'll try to put it all out there, there's a lot of political intrigue in the background regarding uh, appointments where they're pro the master plan uh, preservation areas, protection areas, development areas, and those who are opposed to it. Um, the biggest shortcoming, I guess, of the Highlands Act is that while it talks about reimbursing landowners who lose development rights, um, obviously monetarily, the governor has not uh, put funds in the uh, coffers to, to actually make that happen. So um, recently the executive director uh, was replaced. The uh, majority of the members are being replaced one by one with basically pro-development uh, uh, representatives. And this is a resolution uh, supporting uh, the, the master plan and urging the Rainier Review that they continue to preserve the area for drinking water and not allow um, on plan development in those areas that are designated for preservation. I'm just a little confused because I thought we don't do that anymore. I thought we don't vote on resolutions that are outside the purview of our work. No, is that right? That's right. Really sure. Sure. Uh, that we don't vote on things urging the federal government. Um, Councilman Martin said it the last uh, two weeks ago. Uh, federal, state, or other governments that we don't vote on those things anymore. And it's a waste of time um, to go ahead and do something like that. I really would rather not see that on. Uh, the agenda, the fact that there's political entry behind it um, further, I, I just don't want to be part of it. Um, I would be firmly opposed to having that on the agenda. Well, I think you misunderstood, Jim, what the uh, uh, intent of council members' comments were. I don't necessarily agree with them all the time, but the comments that I understood were those bills that don't affect us directly. Um, uh, Council members, um, some council members uh, are of the opinion that we should not get involved in. This one, uh, we get 25% of our drinking water from this area. I think it does affect us directly. I, I think we do have a stake in protecting our water supply for our families. And uh, I think it's different than some of the other resolutions which I have supported. I haven't shied away from supporting federal and state legislation. I think it's different, but it does directly affect us. I, and I'd like to clarify my previous remarks. Um, I am, uh, it's not a, that I'm against discussing things that are outside the purview of what affects Garwood, it's just that um, we have uh, a county body of government, we have a, a state and federal, obviously, uh, bodies of government, and it's the purview of those bodies, I feel, to talk about things like gun control and so on. Now, I, I know that we have differences on that, but this defect, this if really directly affects Garwood, we get some of our drinking water from Garwood. I mean, from uh, from the island, so it affects Garwood. So I believe that there is a distinction here, and I would wholeheartedly support that bill. Take a look at it. Support that bill, Bill. Thank you. <coughs> I would suggest that between now and the next meeting, everybody could get it in their email. That's correct, right? Mm -hmm. Take a read over it. Um, you can also, um, aside from the political aspects of the original Highlands conflag that took place in the early 2000s, uh, just to get an idea of what actually um, is at stake right now with regard to the Highlands and the water. So you might want to check a little bit out about that and then read the resolution. It's really, uh, and it, we'll put it on, and if you want to vote for it, fine. If not, that's okay. So. Yeah, ben, I think you have, you, have, you have a mover and a second. Then you could definitely put it on the agenda for next meeting if you want to. Okay, just well, I'll get it on there, but I want everybody to check it out so they know what they're what they're voting on for or, um, or against.
just to clarify, am I putting the resolution on the agenda for the next meeting? And if we are, do we need a, a move in a second? No, not, until I, not until I put it on. Okay. 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 Well, but I'll give you the opportunity who, between now and the next meeting to, you know, okay. check out. This is um, sure. one of those things that I would have to agree with uh, Councilman uh, Martin and Mr. Nearstadt with regard to having a direct impact on our town. Um, anything else, Mr. Nears? No, that's it, Thank you. Councilman Peck-Gutley, anything you want to bring? No, no, no. And Councilman Mathieu. I just have two things for tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, one is I would like to uh, share with the public, if you haven't gotten a chance to take some of the materials at the table, we have our budget document up there, as well as uh, some supplementary charts. There's actually seven charts all together that our CFO prepared to um, really give a nice visual representation of the budget, the different aspects of it uh, for the residents as well as the council. We've received it as well. And um, it actually started last year that we provided these uh, charts. It's something I definitely would like to see continue. I would just like to direct your attention to a couple items uh, related to those charts. I know we're having a uh, budget hearing and vote later. Um, for example, the 2013 tax levy, this is something that also went out in the town newsletter, the Garwood Gazette, and I would anticipate the same type of chart for 2014. Uh, of course, we do not yet know our tax impact from the school as well as from the county. We don't have those numbers yet, but once we do, and once the uh, budget um, would be passed, then the CFO could prepare that for 2014. So if you take a look at that, uh, the municipal portion of the tax levy last year was 34%. The county portion was 20%, and the school portion was 45%. So I think that that is uh, worth taking a look at, and it actually leads me to another point <coughs> I have. But before I get to that point in regards to county government, um, also on the chart that has the 2014 budget appropriations, I just want to point out uh, the two largest pieces of that pie, uh, being salaries and wages as well as health care. The two add up to almost $4 million out of our approximately $7 million budget. Uh, it's something where former councilman, former council president said as well, you know, we are a service providing industry, so that's part of the reason why you see the numbers reflected like that. Um, like I said, I wanted to just touch on uh, the county portion of our taxes a little bit. I attended the last meeting of the freeholders, and I went to the budget hearing at 6 o'clock, about an hour before their regular meeting, and it was very interesting, as our resident brought to our attention and we've read about in the papers, and I would hope we're all aware of that, the uh, county budget is going over a half a billion dollars. So 500 million over that. And so at this budget hearing, there were four residents that were not county employees at that meeting. Four out of the 21 municipalities. Two of, uh, two of us there were from Garwood, myself and the other one, I'm sure you can guess who that may be. Uh, we were there, the four residents uh, did speak to the budget and the, um, you know, the freeholders listened to our commentary. One of my major issues that I would like to see if that could possibly be changed going forward. Uh, basically, the county comes up with an average impact that they expect to go countywide. It was looking at about $84 per home at that time. Again, this is the countywide average. And so when I got up to the microphone, I asked them if they could provide what they approximated the municipal impacts, because obviously uh, the tax levy in Summit would be much different than the tax levy in, say, uh, Roselle. So basically, um, on their equation, the municipalities receive different increases. <coughs> and so basically, uh, they could not provide that to me that night, but they said it would be provided the same night as their budget adoption, which is this Thursday. I think this is something that should change going forward. I think it's fair that for the municipalities to at least know what we're looking at, what Garwood is looking at, not just what the countywide average is. So I brought that to their attention, and I understand the answer. However, it's something that I hope uh, can be changed going forward. It would be nice to at least know um, what that could be. So uh, hopefully 
I would encourage residents, I know it's a little bit of a haul going down to Elizabeth, it's not the most convenient thing to go to, but I think it is important to go and see what the uh, our county level of government is doing. Also, um, you know, I've gone up there and I've certainly paid a compliment or two when it's due. Uh, a few meetings in a row, but we always got something, so I was very excited. It was four meetings in a row. Eventually it stopped, but essentially um, I think it's very positive to go as council people with the rotating schedule that we have, but also I would encourage residents to go as well. Again, this is 20% of the taxes. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Jadisco. Okay, we'll move into the public comment portion of our meeting this evening. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address Mayor and Council? Please step up to the microphone. State your full name and address. And um, it, we would appreciate it you limit your comments to about three minutes. Yes, Mrs. Lawrence. And 536 Myrtle Avenue, Gully. Mr. Goriello, did you check? The curb on 500 block. Oh, I, I did. Uh, you're right. The correct a lot of deteriorated curb as there is throughout the borough. Um, we don't necessarily have a curb replacement program, but we usually address curbing when we do road work. But uh, you're right, correct. The curb is in some, has some bad sections in it. It keeps c coming apart, and I keep cleaning the gutter. It's disintegrating completely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So when is that? Four or five more years? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> when you figure out how many streets we got and how many we do in a year, it uh, takes a while. I know it does. I won't be around. <laughs> so we done. Uh, I know we, you know, we have a. At least we used. To, I guess we still have a sidewalk program, right? Yes. Um, and there could conceivably, conceivably be 15, 20 years in between road reconstruction projects. More than that. Yeah. I forgot to err inside of, you know, caution there. Is there something we should be doing to appropriate funds or do something to fix what needs to be fixed curb-wise? Well, uh, any recommendations? I don't have any back recommendations, really. I mean, the Bottom line is all money. It's all about what you can afford. Uh, I mean, if we take money out of the DOT projects, it's just uh, less road work to do. And I don't know what's more important the curb or the road. So, uh, right. And I'm not sure I'm, I want to advance this, but just a question. I mean, we have money in the capital. Should we think about actually, I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea, but bonding for. I think I heard, I think I heard someone about 10 minutes ago say, once you start it. Oh, I know. And it might have come from you. <laughs> I, 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 but then, you know, uh, as, as a how, do you, how do you decide which, you know, uh, you know, which section to do first? I mean, there's a lot of bad in the curb down. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, I would venture to say that most of your curbs are probably 50 years old. Uh, you know, years ago, we sold to every road and, and salt just. You know, it doesn't do well with concrete, so, uh, uh, you know, where do you start? I don't want to belabor the point, you know, it's tough for us sitting up here to hear the response to a resident as well. Yeah, you have a bad curb, and the, the only curb we road gets I can, you know, the only curb I recall we replaced over the last number of years, uh, other than, you know, as Sometimes when we were doing sidewalk work, was the curb was ripped up by a tree falling over or something like that. We really haven't replaced curb with any for any other reason. Um, is, that just, uh, is there any thought from anybody on that? I mean, I, I, it's something we should get into or not? Well, I do have a, a couple questions and some thoughts. Uh, first of all, does it financially make sense to just handle curbing when the road project comes up, or is doing curbing on a separate basis, more expensive per curb, so to speak, or... Um, well, the, the problem with going in and just replacing a few feet of curb or even, you know, uh, is that we, what we find is that most of our roads are too flat to start with. They don't drain well at all. So most of our road work, uh, when we do the curbing, involves drainage and regrading of the road, putting some high points and low points in, the, in a block that's 800 feet long because it's it's maybe a foot of pitch in 800 feet, which is nowhere near what you need. So if you go in and start dropping in pieces of curb, you're not fixing the problem. You're, 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 and you're remediating that, right. but then it's when you come back in five years and do the road, you have to get a curb out anyway. 
Right. So, so, do we do drainage? Do we do anything with the curbing at that time? Yes, we do. Okay, yeah. well, that was Most of our, uh, every pretty much, you know, we we're, right now we do drainage a year ahead of time. Right. Usually we follow up to the road work. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you need the drainage before you can drain the road, obviously. Uh, the roads are, like, for example, we're doing 30 Avenue this year. Uh, there's a lot of drainage in the middle of the block, and that's because the road is just dead flat. The only way you can get it is to put some high and low points in the road. Um, those inlets aren't going to function 100% until we, we replace the curb and, and pitch the water to the inlets all over the block, but it's going to get the water off the road temporarily for a year or so. Uh, to, to do the curb, it doesn't address the drainage problem at all. Mm -hmm. and like I said, you take out a bad piece of curb and put it back, it, it, when you do decide to do the road, you got to take the curb out again anyway because it's <laughs> probably not the right grade. Uh, to follow up with your comments there, which are very enlightening, um, so I know we do road projects basically every year. I've seen it every year that I've been up here. Mm -hmm. um, we're fairly proactive as a municipality, quite honestly, compared to other towns that I drive through. Um, I would wonder, uh, could you give us a ballpark percentage on how many roads you feel are the proper pitch and so forth versus those that aren't? Um, and then I would, my other question would be, maybe it is worth getting a quote on just replacing curbing and see what those numbers even look like. Just so that we can further the discussion at another time with numbers. Well, I, I couldn't tell you offhand how many roads are pitched properly. We don't find it out until we put an instrument on a road start shooting grades, really. Uh, but, um, I mean, obviously if there's water lane, you know, it's a water problem. Right, right. But um, I, I don't see any real benefit to replacing curb by itself. Like I said, if it's, a, if it's a hazardous condition, the curb is sticking out into the road and somebody can get to blow a tire on it, then I think maybe you should replace it. But um, just to replace the curb for more aesthetic purposes than anything else, I, I don't see the benefit to it. I would rather see you spend money on a road work. Fair point. I mean, the curb goes at $20 a foot. You know, you can eat up $25,000 or $30,000 in, in a block without any <coughs> That's well, it's good to know the price. So. I would agree with one caveat, and that would be that as long as that uh, piece of curb, whichever we're talking about, is not present a safety hazard. Well, I, I didn't see anything that, as I said, uh, if a piece of curb is, is sticking out into the road and somebody can blow a tire on it, then I think maybe it should be replaced. But, you know, the, it's starting to spoil, and, and uh, I don't see, I just don't see. The, 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 you know, we've had a lot of roads in town over the years. We put curb on it, didn't have curb on it before. So what's the difference between the curb that's deteriorating and, and going to go back to what it was, which was nothing before, or or a road with curb on it? So uh, I don't know. I you know, the the problem is is that that we have more road work. We need, we need to do more work road work than we do. I mean, we we're losing ground on it. Uh, for example, I I I paved Center Street 30 years ago. Since we paved Center Street 30 years ago, we